when we talk about Mary saving us, she saves us the way Paul saves us, the way Barnabas saves us, the way the apostle saves us, through her prayers for believers, through her giving flesh to Jesus so he can use that flesh to save you, right? And through her pointing you and bringing you to her son, like she did in John 2, 5, when she said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. This is why I changed. I didn't change because of mere human tradition. I changed because I could see these passages in the Bible. And as Catholic apologists would point to them like Dave Armstrong, God bless him for planting those seeds. I eventually had to give in and confess and repent of my tradition in Bible perversion and admit, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. Now, let me show you how John 1.14 Okay, Nancy Lee, God bless you. John 1.14 proves that Mary is instrumental in your salvation. Here you go. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as the only son from the father. You see the word dwelt among us? When he became flesh, that's when he dwelt among us. When he took flesh, a physical body, that's how he dwelt among us. Well, let me show you what the word or dwelt among us is. You Greek readers appreciate that you read Greek. Click on that. Guess what the word dwelt means in the Greek? It comes from skinao, which means to have one's tent dwell. I dwell as an intent, tent in camp, have my tabernacle. This is the word, the verbal form of skine. Guys, pay attention. You who read the Greek versions of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, the word for tabernacle, right, in Greek is skine. Skine is the Greek word used for what Moses had the priests built, the tabernacle, the tent, where God would descend in a pillar of cloud and fill it with his glory. Exodus 33. 7 to 11, Exodus 40, verses 34 to 38, Skene, tabernacle temple, where in 1 Kings 8, 10 to 13, which is 1 Chronicles, chapter 7, sorry, 2 Chronicles, my apologies, 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, verse 12, and 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. So 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. Chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, and verse 12. And 1 Kings 8, 10 to 13. The temple that Solomon built in Greek, Skene. Tabernacle, temple, where the cloud filled it as a sign that God was filling it with his glory. So John said, when Jesus became flesh, that physical body, that flesh body of Jesus now became the tabernacle, the tent, the temple where God dwells in all the fullness of his glory. So Jesus' physical body is the new abiding ta tabernacle temple of God. You with me there? Before I move on, you with me there? Yeah, I might have to do a part two. Yeah, I'm going to have to retitle this. We got it? And this is confirmed in John 2, 19 to 22. Do you remember what Jesus said? Destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. John 2, 19 to 22. And the Jews said, it has taken 46 years for you to build the temple. Yet you will raise it up in three days. And then John said, but the temple that he was speaking of was his body. After he was raised, the disciples remember this and the scripture that was fulfilled. So Jesus says, my physical body is the temple that I will raise in three days. All right, now we got a problem. If Jesus' flesh, his physical body, is the temple, the tabernacle, the tent, where God dwells in all his fullness, who gave him that flesh? 
Who gave him the flesh as his temple and tabernacle? Who? Can you tell me? And when he was in her womb, being formed as a baby, where he was forming himself with the Father's Spirit in Mary's womb, dwelling in her womb, in her sack, being nourished from her and shaping his body for that nine months. Who was then his tabernacle, his temple? As he th said this, a cloud came. Now notice that word overshadowed them. Remember that word overshadowed. So when Jesus was on the mountain, he, Peter, James, and John, and then Moses and Elijah, Jesus transfigured to show his inner abiding divine glory radiating through his physical body. Then the cloud came down on Jesus, Peter, James, and John, just like the cloud came down on Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 24, Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 24, and Exodus chapter 33 and 34. The pillar of cloud came down on the mount, and the pillar of cloud filled the tabernacle. And here's the cloud coming down on Jesus, Peter, James, and John, overshadowing them, because Jesus is now the physical tabernacle that houses the fullness of God. Okay, now watch. Hold on. Read the verse with me. And as he said this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud, like Moses entered the cloud. Exodus 24, 9 to 18, right? And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son. My chosen, listen to him. All right, now watch this. Do you see the word overshadowed? Watch here. Luke 9, 34. And a cloud overshadowed them. Now watch what Gabriel says is going to happen to the Blessed Mother. Let's see if you catch it. Here you go. Luke 1, 34 to 35. Luke 1, 34 to 35. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to do Christmas Victor maybe tomorrow, guys. Took me longer than normal. Luke 1, 34 to 35. And Mary said to the angel, how shall this be since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The same word. The cloud overshadowed the tabernacle. The cloud overshadowed Jesus, James, Peter, and John on the mount. And Mary will be overshadowed by the power of God. Same word used in Luke 9, 34. For the cloud descending upon Jesus, James, Peter, and John. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Did you catch it? So, if Jesus' physical body is the living, abiding tabernacle, temple of God, where God dwells in all his fullness. Don't worry about my denomination before I block you, Spectre. Right? In all his fullness. And yet Jesus took that flesh body from the virgin. And while he was in, the virgin's womb, shaping, forming his physical body with the Father and the Spirit. He was tabernacling in her womb, and he was being formed and fashioned as a male baby in her womb. That means she literally had God, literally tabernacling, literally in her belly, in all his fullness, literally for nine months, and literally coming out of her. And taking flesh from her. And no, but Mary's not special. Nope, she's not special. No, no, no. 
She's just regular. She's just regular, man. That's all she is. She had God literally in her belly, literally dwelling in all his fullness, literally being shaped and formed as a human male baby without ceasing to be God, literally filled with the fullness of the glory of God, literally having the fullness of deity in her physical body. Because if Colossians 2.9 is true, then Mary had the whole fullness of deity in her body. Why? Because look what Colossians 2.9 says. Because until he had a physical body, it was her physical body that was his tabernacle. Colossians 2.9. Colossians 2 9. Now, chocolate, I've done several sessions already on this very issue. Go do my YouTube channel, search Mary, Ark of the Covenant, Mary, Marian doctrines. I already did sessions on the road articles, but here, guys, help me understand biblical. I'm using just Bible, right? Okay, I'm just using Bible. Now, help me, guys, with the logic. Colossians 2 9. For in him, Jesus, the whole fullness of deity. Theotis, Theotis, right? Theotitus, Theotitus. I'm trying to say it how Greek would say it. Theotitas. That which makes God, God. That which makes God, God. All the fullness of what makes God what he is. Jesus has all the fullness of it. Full, perfect deity. He possesses bodily. Yeah, I'll debate him. Bring him here and bring... Your mother too, Dan. I'll debate both of them. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. So if Jesus, as a man with a physical body, is still the fullness of deity, whatever makes God God, he possesses it in its fullness bodily as a physical glorified human being. So when Jesus was in Mary's womb, so when Jesus did not have a physical body, but was in Mary's womb for nine months, taking a physical body, where was the fullness of deity residing? Where was the complete perfection of deity residing? Wasn't it residing in her? Am I wrong? Where am I wrong, guys? Can you help me out? Can you help me out here? So you're telling me she's an ordinary woman, just an ordinary woman, just like one of many, when the fullness of deity, the fullness of God, the fullness of his glory was literally in her, filling her and every cell of her body for nine months. For nine months. And it's her flesh that became his flesh because he took flesh from her. And that flesh is the tabernacle where God dwells in all his fullness. And you still don't see why this woman is glorious.